Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is actually the first episode of a new series I'm gonna to bring to my YouTube channel. And it's really been inspired by all the ladies in my life, my mom, my sister, my wife, uh, my daughter, just there's so many things that I think we could do to inspire women and I wanna do my little part to help that. And the first guest we have on the show is Elizabeth Navarrete. How are you doing this morning, Elizabeth? I'm doing great, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be spearheading this. Uh, we're doing the first episode ever. This is something phenomenal. The idea behind this is, is quite impressive, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for being first. I know it's, we'll figure it out together, so I appreciate that. Right. Yeah, so I thought where we would start, just knowing both our stories start in 2003. We all know about 08 and, and your successes. Why don't you talk about never giving up, learning your lessons, moving forward, kind of all of that, um, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. So, uh, yes, with learning lessons, right? I started uh, in real estate in 2003 with the hopes of being, I wanted to be the best realtor there was out there, right? I'm like, look, I have, I was a social worker prior to being in real estate. So I had the skill set, which, you know, empathy, the, the listening skills, the, the uh, re being resourceful, all of those things translated very well into, into transitioning to real estate. And being a real estate agent was really my first choice. Uh, I didn't know a lot about real estate. I had never sold anything in my life because of course in social work, you don't sell anything. Uh, however, the skill set worked quite phenomenally and I did well. 2003 was the start of, uh, was a new beginning for me. And, um, it was something that I was scared of doing because I was not knowledgeable. I knew nothing about real estate. What I learned about real estate, I learned in my classes, preparing to become a realtor. And so I think that um, it's important us as women to understand that we have so many talents, so many uh, amazing traits that will really take us far in life. And the fact that we're always looking, striving to be better, striving to, to accomplish more, I think that that is such a, so important for us to take on through our professional lives as well. So right now, if you're listening to us and you're at home uh, taking care of the kids and you're just doing your own thing, know that there is also that opportunity for you to start your own business. <clears throat> us women are very, are go-getters. We just like to just dive in and, and, and get things done. And I mean, come on, if you're, if you're a mom and you're a housewife and you're doing all these things, you're already managing a team. You're managing your household. You're managing your husband in a way. He's also your team, right? So from, from, from the finances to the groceries to what's going to be for dinner, right? You're already managing a household. That's, that's a lot of work. That skill set translates very well to being a business owner and I think that that is something that a lot of women oversee and say well you know I'm only I'm only at home I'm only doing this well that's a lot of work and I commend you for doing that and I think that if you have a desire and a dream and a goal and an, an aspiration to do something else and do something bigger there are so many opportunities out there and I will touch on the subject of real estate because that's where I that's that's where I'm in and you can absolutely run your own business from home. There's so many women, so many single moms in real estate investing, so many moms that are that have their husbands uh, work in the oil and gas field or outside of the home for so many hours. You can absolutely do this and while you're still taking care of your family and your household without having to leave. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I really do believe that real estate investing is the perfect side hustle for a mom, a wife, you know, maybe like you said, to use your example, right? The husband's out in the oil fields and, but, and you know, you're watching the kids and what can you do that could change your family's finances, right? Real estate investing, when you get good at it, you understand values, you're easy to talk to, you can, you can negotiate. It's, it is so much. So to become an, a female entrepreneur in the real estate space is phenomenal. Why, why don't you talk about all the things you've done just to paint the vision of what's possible for ladies. Right. Absolutely. So when, when I first started, obviously I started as a real estate agent that will take you time out of the house. So um, I wouldn't advise you to get into becoming a real estate agent if you're just, if you're at home, 
But what I what you can do is you can uh, tap into the wholesaling aspect, and that's something that requires a lot of uh, networking from home because you can network on Facebook forums, Facebook groups that are that are real that are uh, real estate related, right? Real estate investment related, you, and then you you can do your marketing. You can uh, talk to your mail carrier when they go and drop off the mail at your house, or when you see them drive up to your driveway, run outside, say hello, say look, I'm looking to buy a couple of homes in my own neighborhood if you happen to know or close by in the vicinity if you happen to know of any homes that are that are uh, run down that look distressed that are boarded up or maybe condemned by the city will you give me a referral I'd appreciate it and in turn I can give you a finder's fee in exchange for that if I end up closing in the moment that I do close and that way you're already creating relationships with people anytime you go to the grocery store the big pickup groceries if you're still doing that or or you're just picking up your groceries talk to anybody that you come across with your barista anybody tell them what you're doing tell them that you're buying real estate that way they know who to go to and the person that they can refer to you just never know who may need help with uh, saving them or getting them out of a situation a distressed situation. Absolutely. Another concept I know we want to talk about is establishing that hope or belief that this is possible. You know, you started your, your investing career and, you know, split between Chicago and Texas. They've really doubled down, done a lot of great things in Texas. Why don't you help paint that belief for ladies that this, this is possible and it can be meaningful uh, to the family unit? Absolutely. So uh, something that I that I am that I enjoy seeing is women that come up to me and say, look, I have this jewelry line that I'm selling or I have this makeup line that I'm selling. You have a lot of women that are really that are getting out there and just wanting to to get into the entrepreneur become their own business. Right. But they're still if you're selling makeup or you're selling uh, jewelry, you're only getting a small percentage of that. I really don't know how much that is, but I think it's like 30% of whatever you sell versus if you do real estate, you can, you, if you're wholesaling real estate, like I was saying earlier, if you're buying distressed properties and you're transferring the rights to buy to somebody else, you're assigning your contract to somebody else, you can make as low as 5,000 and up to however much you want, as long as you're able to negotiate properly. Right? So I think that, the time is now. Uh, it's our time now to get in the forefront and be get in those in those businesses. And in real estate, you will see that there are a lot of men. It's a it's it's very uh, male dominated. However, there are quite a few of us in there. We're just either not in the forefront or some of us on the forefront. But there's still so many women that are that are now transitioning into real estate and not your typical realtor. They're actually wholesalers or negotiators. They're getting out there and building rapport. And I will tell you this, we do have uh, an advantage, right? Because us as women, we are caretakers. We are, we have that, we have that mom instinct, right? That motherly instinct. And by you applying you, those skills and that, uh, that personality with your homeowners, you're able to acquire deals much faster and you're, you'll, ha you will be able to obtain people's trust because that's key. In this industry, you have to gain people's trust. That's absolutely, whether it's with a colleague that you're wanting to assign your contract to, whether it's a homeowner that you wanna buy their house from, building rapport and, build, and gaining trust is absolutely, that's, that's the secret sauce. Everyone wants to know, well, what, how do I, how do I, what do I need to do? What's the magic potion to yeah. be able to get a house under contract? Be personable be humble and be uh be accessible just and have a and, and be able to listen you're not going into a property to pitch anything you're going into a property to hear the set of problems that the homeowner is having and you are there to provide a solution and figure out what you can do to help them get out of that of that problem and out of that out of, out of that situation no question and if I were to build, I haven't built a team, but if I were going to build a team of, of people, you know, my acquisition team, it would, if I, if I could, right, if it was legal, I'm sure it's not legal, but I would have 100% women do it, right? Men, men not need to apply because my experience is they want to just cut to the deal. They want to put it on the barbecue. They want to cash the check, but they don't realize there is so right. much between finding someone in pain and getting the deal done. 
not listening, shortcutting. It's just, I, I do believe that, that women have a natural advantage at that aspect and, and right. should, should go for it and learn from, from leaders like you and, and others and realize that they have an advantage and go cash those checks. Um, yeah. Yes, we do have that advantage. I'll tell you that uh, several gentlemen on my team, when they go by themselves, they do well. I mean, men do phenomenally well, obviously, in this industry, especially the ones that are personable, the ones that, are, that have that warm personality do much better than the ones that go in there with a with a plan, with a strategy. Yeah. You have to always go in with a plan, but with that strategy and with that, okay, I'm going to pitch to this family and I'm going to be in and out in 15 minutes. Yeah. That's not going to work. And so when you have a woman in the mix and when they take me, it's like, oh, we already know that appointment's going to be longer. Yeah. Because I just, I'll just look at something. Listen, it's as simple as that's her nature. Us women yeah. were like, I love that picture on the wall. That is so beautiful. I love that family portrait. Were you on a vacation or was it a, what kind of family? Was it a wedding? What kind? Yeah. And then you will just have the homeowner just share anything and everything with you. And, and that's, you know, us as women, we have that charisma for those long conversations. No, it's, but yeah. those, long, those lengthy conversations are the ones that, that will definitely put the foot in the door for you and will definitely help you. And you'll thrive in this industry if you have that, that no, skill set for sure. No question. Sellers want to sell to people they like. It very rarely yeah. boils down to the biggest number, right? If, if Absolutely. Sell it to someone they like. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and and here's the thing. When I walk into an appointment, I'm like, I'm not thinking, what is the lowest that I can buy this house for? I'm really not. I'm not going in there with that. I know my numbers, mm -hmm. what numbers I, I want, but I'm really not focusing on that. If anything, I don't even walk in with like uh, anything in my hands to like uh, divide me between myself and the person that I'm talking to. I walk in and I'm, com I'm comfortably dressed. I'm not dressed to the nines. I'm not all done up in makeup. I'm very casual looking because I don't want to come in as a, as um, what is this called? As an, an authoritative person. We have to be authoritative among our colleagues. But when you go across, uh, you, when you're talking to a seller, you don't want to come in authoritative or I'm prepared and I've got this and here are my comps and this and that because that's off putting. They're, they'll automatically just shut down. Mm -hmm. So if you walk in and you're casually taking a video of the house or taking pictures and commenting on different things, how you like this, how you like that, those little details, that's the secret sauce. That's really, really the magic that you need to have. And you can just sprinkle everywhere you go because that's really what's going to get you that contract because cool. the family will trust you. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. So one of the things that I see uh, in my wife, for example, is, is her, her nature is to try to do everything, right? So in this business, there are so many things that could be done. It, it has to be overwhelming. So what would you say to a, a, a young lady going after this business uh, in regards to trying to do it all? First of all, I'm going to give you the woman to woman, right? I'm going to give you the okay that it, you don't have to do it all. Okay. Take it day by day or week by week or goal by goal, right? You don't have to be the perfect at everything all the time. There are times where we're going to make mistakes. Uh, you don't have to be the perfect mom. You don't have to be the perfect wife. You don't have to be the perfect sister or daughter or friend, colleague. There are going to be times where you're going to have to say no. And saying no is just as fine as saying yes. How many times do we as women say yes because we want in? Yes, because we don't want to miss out on opportunity. Yes, because if I don't say yes now, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to have this chance to do this next time in the future. It's perfectly fine to say no. It's actually, I actually invite you to say no, three, three no's this week. Give three no's to something this week. That way you're giving a yes to you. You have to say yes to you first. Think about what you really want to do in life and how far you want to, head, want to get ahead and how joy is important. It's not about being happy. It's not about the, 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 the destination being happiness. It's about having joy in your life and have it continuously, not feeling run down, not feeling stressed that I have to do this. I have to do that. You know, um, there's a couple of, uh, sayings out there, but it's like, look, I'm trying to live, trying to be a perfect person, right? I'm trying to take my vitamins, work out, eat healthy, feed my kids, 
uh, pay my bills. Did it? And yes, you have to do all those things. But again, there are going to be times where you're just going to have to say, you know what? No, I really don't want to do that right now. I really can't do that right now. There's a book that one of my mentors wrote. I'm sure everybody knows her, Randy Zuckerberg. She's actually, I'm actually in the Zuckerberg Institute. And um, she, she started the Zuckerberg Institute precisely to help other entrepreneurs. And she obviously speaks a lot to us women, female entrepreneurs, right? And she talks about, the, the book is called Pick Three, where she says, look, Pick three things a day, whether it's fitness, family, uh, business, pick three things you want to be good at on a daily basis and stick to that. So that already in itself is telling us you don't have to do or be everything all the time. We don't have to be on all the time. We don't have to always have the makeup done and the hair done and, and the kids perfectly dressed. I mean, there's going to be days where it's not going to be perfect. It's okay. You are, you are tr striving to be the best. And that's, what's ma that's what matters. And if you're looking for the future and you're looking for the financial freedom that you could, the time freedom and the financial freedom that you can have and you can give to your family, you're already, you already won half of the battle. Yeah. I love that pick three. I'm, I think I'm going to go get that book and, and at least make that Christmas presents for every young lady or, or woman I know. That, that's I, yes. I highly recommend it. It's a phenomenal book. Randy Zuckerberg really, really, she's, amazing she's uh, she was in uh, silicon valley then she went to new york and she pursued her dream of uh having broadway shows and now she's a two-time tony award winner wow. she just won two tony awards uh, a month ago and so um and she and she was pregnant she was already <laughs> eight nine months pregnant she just had i think uh, i think they already formally announced it she just had her baby girl last week and so wow. All while, all while being, being pregnant, doing all these things and running our, our coaching program, which is the Zuckerberg Institute. She mentors us and coaches us. And I highly recommend you look it up. I can also put the link here if you want. Sure, absolutely. For more information. But it's amazing. And I think that um, we normally, when we talk about business, we don't talk about the essence of ourselves that are linked, are interlinked with our business side, but it's all interlinked. Think that if your internal your internal balance is there and you are self aware and you're aware of your fears and you can convert those fears and those doubts into reality into into something positive, you can definitely get ahead and That's succeed in life and in your business. That's awesome. So as we round out this first episode of women uh, from women to women, the last thing I wanted to touch on was empowerment. I know that's a big deal for you. Um, that's really why we're both agreed to take a shot at doing this. So talk about how, what that means to you and, and really what you hope, hope to accomplish. To me, female empowerment it's, is, is a collaboration effort. It's not about you just being, because what happens is that as entrepreneurs, we're solopreneurs, right? I may have so many colleagues in this industry, but in the end, after all the doors are closed, after all that fun stuff and you're on your own, right? You're on an island all on your own trying to make things happen and, and make sense of your business and how you want to shape it. So the female empowerment for me is collaboration, not competition. It's uniting, it's getting together, it's maybe breaking bread, maybe sitting down and just masterminding. Sitting with my, my friend and my colleague, Charles Nguyen, he likes to call it the think tank. That's so important, sit in think tank mode and just think. Think to yourself and then think with your colleagues because several minds together work better than one, right? So we, why not think and discuss and talk about potential opportunities? How can I help you? My biggest thing is when I meet people, I'm like, how can I attribute to your success today? Ask that. You will be surprised how many people will be like, oh my gosh, I feel so overwhelmed. It's okay to talk about those things. You have to. The moment you let them out, Ah, you feel better. The moment you put things out in existence as far as your goals and your plans, they're happening. The moment you're, you, you speak them out, they're actually, everything's working in, in your favor to make that happen. And I think that we don't do that enough. As women, we're like, well, you know, if I share what's going on in my business, they're going to yeah. steal my ideas. It's not about stealing. It's, it's about collaboration and, and layering it up because if you share what you're doing and that's working for you, but somebody else has a better idea, their ideas and yours meshing together, it's something beautiful that happens. And I think that I highly recommend reach out to a, a, 
a woman entrepreneur, reach out to another woman, ask them, what are you doing? What are your goals in life? Uh, other than obviously the most beautiful thing is being a mom and, and raising a beautiful family and, and, and doing all those things. What are your professional goals? What do you want in, for your life in the next the, forever, right? From here on forward. That's awesome. Well, thank you for doing this. Um, you've given us a lot. How could women reach out to you and uh, follow you and do all those great things? Sure. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is R-E-I-C-E-O. You can also find me uh, through my business uh, uh, page, Houston REI Network. I'm also on Facebook, same thing, Houston REI Network, or uh, by my name, Elizabeth Navarrete, and I'm sure my information will be down in the comments. Yes. Yep, down in the comments. <laughs> down there. <laughs> yeah, down there. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. Thank you very much for you know, this. This has been so much fun. I really hope this takes off and uh, you can make introductions to other ladies that, that should be on this, uh, this playlist or this, this show. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Reach out to me. I'm here to provide any type of uh, information that I can, any, any tips on how to get started. I'm here for that. And also save the date, October 4, 5, and 6 in Houston, Texas. We're throwing the biggest biggest real estate event we've ever seen here, bringing names from outside of Texas. So I'd love to meet you. And if you come to the event, come and find me and say hi. I'd love to know what you're doing and uh, hear your successes. Very cool. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Yep.